Center of Weirdness, a hilarious flight into the silly world of a podcast that might as well not exist. Josh and Skinner, two loners on a crusade to champion the cause of the dumb, the bad, the weird. In a world of programs that operate above the ratings. Hello and welcome to Center of Weirdness, the weird podcast about very weird stuff, but mostly it's just TV episodes. Uh, I'm Josh, and with me, as always, is Skinner. Hey, Skinner. Hey, Josh, everyone. Welcome to our ultimate glory. (laughs) That's right. It's our ultimate glory here because we are wrapping up our Summer Nights series, and we are wrapping up our uh, Garth Goliath saga um, with the with Knight Rider, and unfortunately, it does not go out with a bang like Adrian would have liked, uh, but it goes out with a bit of a whimper. <laughs> Which is weird, as is, we've mentioned many times, we're, these are four episodes uh, that we are covering, but they would have aired originally before being broken up in subsequent uh, re-airings as two episodes. Yes. But... Man, I can't imagine like, you know, getting through episode one of like the first half of this episode of this, you know, basically made for TV movie and be like, all right, mm-hmm. you set up all this stuff. And then is watching the boring ass <laughs> second half of this. We have, so out of four episodes on Goliath and the Knight Rider, uh boy, three of them snooze fests, which makes no sense. Wh- which makes the very fun first part of this second Goliath series. Almost confusing. How did they get it right? Because they, I, from what I can tell, they don't know how to get it right. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like we had a good time in the first, the first part of Goliath Returns, and we, and based on what we saw on the IMDb plot summary, we thought, oh, okay, season or episode two will be. Like, it'll get a little, like, crazier. They've captured Michael, and we'll, like, get to see what's going on. And they just kind of don't do anything with it because the IMDb plot summary says that Adrian, the doctor who or who be- rebuilt Goliath – I think she's a doctor or a scientist or something – and who, who got Garth out of prison wants to install Kit's CPU into Goliath. And we're like, oh, cool. So we're going to see, like – Um, we're going to see Goliath with like, uh, uh, you know, some sort of personality because the way that they talk about this truck, it's like it has a personality. It's like it's their version of Kit, which is what the show is kind of setting it up as, but it's just a truck. It's not anything special. It has no personality. And the whole putting Kit CPU into Goliath, I think does not come up in the episode that we watched. Unless it's edited out. And if it it was, it would be... A line or two, or we we missed it, which again be a line or two, unimportant to the plot because it never happens. No, never. It's never foiled. Uh, I. It's confusing that someone not only thought that was a plot, but went and made a point to write it out as the plot on IMDb because <laughs> it isn't. But it would have been the better plot. This we've talked about it before. Uh, how Goliath is just a truck. No, no, not never more than this episode where he is just a truck, but they talk about Goliath like it is more than a truck. It's like they forgot to create this thing that they could then talk about in this way. It's it's this weird thing where like they have all this set up, but they never took the time or bothered to create the backstory for what they want it to be, which makes no sense because it's it's their own fault. If they want Goliath to be a character and something special and the evil twin to Kit like Garth is to uh, Michael and all this stuff, just have him have a personality. Yeah. They could have done it for in between ep- the two series. 
anything. Like, and you want to sit there and go like, well, it wouldn't make any sense for them to have that kind of tech. It, nothing here makes fucking no. sense. Well, so they had the perfect opportunity in this segment to do that, where they had captured Michael and Kit, and they have Kit up on a um, – a, a lift in a garage and they've done some things to him. And I was thinking, Oh, this is where it comes in. Maybe they, they steal some of Kit's, uh, you know, code or something and put it oh, into yeah. or, or just even like download the file and do file, you know, control C control V. <laughs> yes. But like, and then Michael comes in and he rescues Kit, but maybe it like didn't complete the transfer. So maybe Goliath has a personality, but it's like, very dumb, like it's he's brutish and yes. angry and stupid, which would have been fucking hilarious. Yes, of course you want that because once again you're doing evil doubles. There is three sets of doubles in this episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so let's let's start kind of where we left off. Um, we get a nice little uh, because this would have been the episode in syndication. We get a little uh, refresher from part one uh, to to catch us up that Garth is out of prison. Uh, Goliath is back, and we see that um, you know Doctor Bergstrom has been cloned. Uh, that plot doesn't really matter or make any sense. In fact, we well, don't even see what happens to the fake Bergstrom. <laughs> he, he, he is moved off. He goes back to his. He home goes to planet. hotel jail. <laughs> He goes to hotel jail where they where they have all kinds of background check information, but like <laughs> that part, I still am not quite sure what the extent of his a bit of of his mental cloning, or what the fuck uh, that yeah. was all about. Like it didn't matter; it just ma- mattered in the moment. But yeah. like, but he my- is taken off. He is taken out of the story was such haste. Yeah, but my favorite part of this because it was clearly meant to be like a one uh like longer episode, they don't have any footage to run the credits over, so they just rerun the opening credits footage from the first part when Garth is in the limo driving up to the house to meet Adrian for the first time. They just play that footage again and then they cut it before we see Garth get out of the car. So they cut it, and then we see that um, Michael has been apprehended and is being taken into a cell. Um, And he's thrown into, like, this basically, like, uh, medieval (laughs) dungeon-type thing. And we find out that Garth comes in, and we get a nice little split screen here. And (laughs) we... It's funny, there's this bit of dialogue exchange where he's like... um, He's like, uh, are you surprised to see me again? Or so he says something like that, and Michael's like, no, not really. And then Garth goes, liar. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, he's been told multiple times that Goliath Garth is, is back. back. <laughs> but he basically says, like, the last time I told you I was going to take you back to Africa and put you in the cell where I spent all my time. But that's not really practical. So I just had the entire cell deconstructed and brought over here stone by stone <laughs> and rebuilt in the basement of this house. Okay. One, I have two things to say about this before we get into the amusing a bit about how this doesn't matter at all. Uh, how in God's name, this guy who was in prison uh, up until this, like two days ago, uh, pulled this off. <laughs> because it would have required him to know he was being released, and he did not know he was being re- uh, broken out until it happened. Yeah, he seemed as surprised as anybody else. <laughs> sure, uh, but he he managed to do this. Where's his resources? What's his skill? Like and like, and who 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 would facilitate this? How would it be done? Also, very funny. Speaking of Goliath, this is basically somewhat the plot of Gargoyles. <laughs> oh yeah, and said, so, but instead of bringing oh. It, because it's it, because you brought it brick by brick and all of it over that you also brought over the gargoyles, which you know <laughs> was his plan to get them above the clouds so they would be, become uh break the spell. Um, go watch gargoyles, I guess. Uh, uh but, yeah, good like show. instead of the gargoyles, he brought over African rats. Yes, he, he brought over rats that apparently love to mate very quickly and then will do anything they can to feed their young. Um, which he basically just means that Michael's going to get eaten by rats at some point. So he ins- he was in prison for a long time with these, and he insists like it's going to happen really quickly to Michael because like, yeah. they're already breeding. He talks about they're breeding a lot, um, which makes me wonder, uh, since he was in prison with these rats for a long time, um, did they eat his dick? 
<laughs> well, no, we know that because we know that that's not the case because he's able to he's able to give it to to Adrian, but not well. Well, okay, fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, that that turn in storyline, maybe because we didn't see the first Adrian episode, mm-hmm. uh, is so fucking ego stroking. I cannot even believe it. Yeah, and I and I know this entire show was a wank for uh, Hasselhoff, but still, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty wild. So, um, basically, Michael is stuck in this dungeon. For a little while, we cut over to uh, Devin and April along with the real Dr. Bergstrom, and they're trying to devise the a real way. Superintendent. <laughs> they're trying to devise a way to get out of their cell that they're in. So they start talking about like various like homemade explosives, and um, essentially in in uh, an episode that happened uh, several years before um, MacGyver existed, they MacGyver up a bomb. To blow the hinges off the the doors of their cell, and quite a, also in reference to MacGyver, uh, in its its parody MacGruber, uh, they they fuck up and get cut like within seconds. <laughs> yeah, so they they build this. We can just talk about this because it goes over a couple scenes, but it's not really that important because ultimately because they get caught immediately. It's, it's, immediately. it's a waste of time. <laughs> yes, they they're like they're talking about it they're like ah oh, spies bread. Yes, they use all these different things, but we don't have this. How do we do this? And they're like, well, I've got this thing and I've got this thing. And I wish Devin had had all bunch of stuff shoved up his ass. Yeah, because like if you go to the spy museum, apparently that's something you can go see. Is like an entire thing. Uh, display of things that spies shove up their asses. Yeah, um, but Devin's not. Uh, he's not a good spy. But uh, he's not good at anything. <laughs> yes, but they're like, yeah. Well, we'll take the lining of this jacket, and then we'll take this glass, and we'll shave down your collar stays, and we'll make these things, and then we'll put some wire on. It. And it's like they're just really kind of putting this whole thing together. And they do all the work, and then they you know hide and they blow it up with the electricity, and then they walk outside, and Garth is there, and he's like, "Good job escaping. Too bad it didn't do anything." <laughs> You're just like, it's well, such, that was a waste such of time. A waste of time. It's like, I guess they, it's they just to like, give they, them they, something to do. I guess, but this is the second Garth episode in a row where, like, he's left alone with them without Michael, and they immediately fuck up. Like last <laughs> time, he immediately got away from them, and this time they break out for like, it's literally they blow up the door and he's there. Yeah, it's so like, why even bother? Besides, it's like, like how did they 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 walk out into the hallway and they're about to go up some stairs and then Garth just steps out and goes, "The great escape has begun and ended very quickly." <laughs> and you're just like, funny. how did you not see him standing there in the hallway? It's, it's so dumb. And like, if it, it, go full MacGruber and have like Devin ask, like, who do I have to fuck to get out of here? <laughs> um, but like, so they do this. And that's that's happening at the same time. Um, Michael gets a visit in his cell from Adrian, and that this is when the the episode takes a uh, very interesting turn. So we talked, I think, briefly about it in the in the last episode. But Adrian was a character in a previous episode where she used some spell or something to to put Michael under a trance and yeah, tried like, to like steal that's, some like info Demona from, from Gargos. <laughs> oh, yes, very much like that. But yeah, she tried to steal Kit's technology for some reason. I think that was the episode where they had to put Kit into a television, um, <laughs> which sounds very funny. So she comes down and she's like talking to him. And then she lets this like line drop where she's like, I like to watch men sleep and fantasize about what they're dreaming about. And she talks about how she's like, since their last meeting, she's been thinking about Michael constantly. And she basically wants to, dis- it's like she wants to have both him and Garth because she wants to see which one she likes more. <laughs> like which one that she likes fucking more. The evil go- one or the good one? <laughs> and she like literally said like two complete opposites. One good, one evil. Like t- t- evil people actually call themselves evil, but um, it's so such a turn of like this character who was kind of the mastermind, even like in control of Garth last in part one, turning into like first she's like actually I only want to do this because Michael is so hot, and then but also I don't want to get rid of Garth because because David Hasselhoff is so hot. <laughs> And the rest of the episode, she's just being dragged along by Gareth and screaming. Yeah, it's it's a weird. She loses all all agency in that. Yeah, part two. like she rebuilt Goliath, so it feels like she should have 
And she like goes and, and she tells him like I rebuilt Goliath and I got you out. And he's like Goliath got me out. Yeah. I would have got out without you. And like <laughs> and then like he just gets mad at her and like I guess he won that argument because she, he fucking drives her off a cliff. Yeah, for no yeah. reason. <laughs> Spoiler alert: they die unceremoniously. <laughs> I think they're just gonna they're just, they're gonna not unceremoniously. No, I think they starve to death or run out of air on the bottom of the oh bottom maybe, of the maybe maybe so so. Um, back at the hotel, we find out that the fake Dr. Bergstrom, um, he kind of comes out and talks to, uh, his niece. What the hell is her name? I don't remember. <laughs> she don't have the IMDb up anymore and they don't say her name this episode really. Barely. Uh, yeah, maybe she's barely it's usually a Christine. In the, when the, Christina. When that's it. Christina, it's okay. Christina. So, um, she barely does anything in this episode. So. He, she come like she's looking through his his bag for something, and he comes out, and he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, everything's in order. Um, you're, you're, you know, everyone's gonna think I'm your uncle. You know that I'm not your uncle. Uh, if you try to like run away or you try to like alert anyone, your uncle's gonna get hurt. So it's best that you just um, stay quiet and pretend that I'm your uncle. Unclear what his plan is. Unclear what he's going to do. Un- unclear or what he, he what he could do. Because when he gets captured, she like she tells on him immediately, and like he can't tell anything about it. Yeah, it's, it's he didn't have a walkie. To- he doesn't have a talk boy on him like Michael. Yeah, it's it's very weird. So Michael back. Oh, in by the way, s- he drops the accent, so we know it's a real. Oh yes, he's, yeah, he he's doesn't. The he, bad. Yeah, he does not have his accent. Um, so Michael is back in the cell, and he is still able to communicate with Kit via his wristwatch, which seems like an oversight on both Garth and Adrian's part. Like, they should have removed that yeah, they would from both his know that. wrist immediately. <laughs> okay, but, what is... Um, okay, my question of, like, 19... Late 1970s into the mid-80s thing is, uh, what was their love affair with the the robot that complains like a human? Like a really, like a really whiny human. Because he's he's in full three PO mode. Yeah, <laughs> like he, like he, he might as well say like, "Ooh, there's spider webs on me." It, it's so it's so over the top. How much like Michael is, you know, he's 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 a man of action. He's not that worried. He's gonna get everyone out. Kid is just disgusted with his surroundings and is just having a panic attack. He's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has more personality than Michael does, honestly. Um, but like, so he has Kit take audio recordings from Adrian, and then re- from when I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he can hear the conversation that they're having, or if he's just able to listen in anywhere she's talking in the house. But why? I don't know, but just that's because not micro, that's not how sound waves work. But sure, <laughs> but he uses that and he reorders it into a different sentence so that Michael can play that audio from his wristwatch, and the guards will hear it and then think that she's in the cell with him. So he does this, and basically she's like, "Guards, open the door! I'm letting Michael out." And they're like, "Okay." Not once questioning why is she in there. We didn't see her go in there. How long has she been in there? Why is she doing this? And so, if I if I was if I was say Adrian or Garth, I would tell people like, by the way, he's got a supercar. Um, Shit might happen. Don't open that door. Yeah, it's it's just like very like lazy. And so they do open the door, and uh, of course Michael fights them and is able to escape. Um, It'd be funny if like De- like Devin Heem is immediately caught and beat up. <laughs> so he escapes. He gets he gets to the garage where they're holding Kit. He's able to get Kit back online, and Kit's then still whining about how much he. I've never been more displeased with 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 the, the surroundings I've been in. I'm yeah, like, he he talks about being um uh, strung up like a piece of meat. <laughs> Just like what? they're probing. It's so like if, here he goes on with them probing him and blah blah blah. It's like. Okay, this would be where you did the thing where they tried to steal your personality component or copy yeah. it and put it into, into Goliath. I mean, that's clearly kind of 
did they just forget to do that part? <laughs> like they were editing and like, oh shit, we forgot to film the part where they tried to steal his personality and put into Goliath. Like it's it's very easy to do that. Like and and it would make sense for the way the episode ends as well. Like if uh, the the specific sound effect that they use. Oh the my! Like I, I mean, we're, you have to put the sound effect in there at the end of the show. Maybe every episode from now on, because if it doesn't make sense, if it makes sense for them to have th- this show end with that, our show might as well end with that every episode. Well, so, okay, so th- this would have been the perfect spot for them to have, like, pulled the, um like, some of his thing, his, like, personality out and put it into Goliath. But, but Michael interrupts it, and so... You know, Kit is back online, but Goliath is like very kind of brutish, like we said, and very like slow. Like I drive truck fast. I am fast man. I am strong. Or the truck gets angry, and that's what happens at the end because what they do is really, really stupid. Yeah. So, um, so and the anyway. African rats are now out of this episode, and hope and unfortunately, they're now going to be an invasive species in this uh, <laughs> section of California or the desert. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um. So. He he blows out the back of the garage and drives away, and um, he he's able to talk to Devin and April for a second, and they say, no, go go rescue Christina first because she's actually in danger with the fake Dr. Bergstrom, so you can come back for us. And so he, he heads off to the hotel, and he sees um, Bergstrom and Christina uh, in the lobby, and he runs up and tries to like play it very casual, and uh, – the fake Dr. Bergstrom isn't having it, but Michael grabs him and pulls his like his concealed gun out. And um the the hotel like security guard runs over and says, Hey, what's going on here? And he's like, This guy's a fake, uh, he's not the real Dr. Bergstrom. And Christina backs it up immediately and is like, Yeah, no, he's not my uncle. He's a, he's a fake. And then Michael's reasoning is, well, Dr. Bergstrom doesn't own a gun. Check the serial numbers and the registration on this gun, and if it's not, if it doesn't belong to him, then take him away. And if it does, then you can let him go. And the guy's like, "All right, come with me, sir." And then they just leave the hotel. Like Michael and Christina just leave and don't deal with the fake Doctor Bergstrom. We never see him again. We don't know what happened to him. <laughs> In theory, if it's fifty-fifty, that it, for on um, we know, but like. The security would be like, okay, well, you know, rationally, uh, there aren't clones, so it probably is Dr. Birdstrom, uh, and his, his niece is lying for some reason, mm-hmm. perhaps yeah. this man has pressured her to say this. Yeah. Um, the gun has only ever been really in his hand, but like, okay, you would say like, hey, um, you are also uh, being held until police get here, until we your theory is proven correct because if it's proved incorrect, you've let somebody who tried to kill Dr. Bergstrom away uh, and, this, and have this leading and have complete, scientist on laser technology. This the scientist who uh, the entire staff thinks is incredibly hot. <laughs> yes. It makes no sense why they buy this, why they let him walk away, why like they, <laughs> you know, like he the gets police, t- taken. Yeah, the police show up, and the security guards like this man in a leather jacket tried to kill the most attractive person we've <laughs> ever had stay at this hotel. And we had we had to let him go because he came up with this really airtight excuse of this gun I'm holding uh, can't possibly belong to this guy. Um, also, I'm, I'm sure the people who gave him this gun, who went out through all the whole trouble of faking someone's face and memories, may have filed off any registration numbers on a gun they gave him well like i mean the security guard goes back he checks he's like well this this uh, gun is not registered to dr bergstrom so i think i'll have to kill you or or you've been sentenced to death it's not there's no way the real dr bergstrom would have ever gotten a gun that isn't registered to his name in america yeah, we're, we're, we definitely um, we definitely can't let you wander around in the streets with an unregistered weapon. So uh, you're put to death. I'm trying to like pre DNA evidence, um, which would have been this. Um, and once again, if they had taken the time to somehow clone his memories and clone his entire face and voice and everything else, I would assume his fingerprints are the same, right? 
they don't say it, but like, <laughs> is there any way on God's green earth for like authorities to prove this isn't like what what you know, what I don't, yeah. evidence do they have biologically that he isn't Bergstrom? Yeah, they don't. Him? They do not go into that even at all. even if like even if the other Bertram came and said, "Hey, this isn't me. I'm the real one." Like the technology used to make him doesn't really exist to regular <laughs> humanity. Like what what can they charge him with? How can they ever prove he's not that one is one and one is the other? They're essentially the same human. You yeah. can't you have to arrest both. You have to kill both of them. <laughs> Yeah, we can never be sure. So you both we can never must be sure. die. You have to shoot both. When, when given the problem of shoot me or shoot him, I'm the real one. You have to shoot both of them. Yeah, they both have to go. Um, so then um, Michael and uh, Christina go back to uh, – they're heading back to the house to try to um, – rescue Devin in April. This is when we get a, a pretty good scene. Um, well, not good, but good for the the context of this show. So Garth goes in and basically says, like, I'm going to blow up the house. I'm going to short circuit everything when we leave, and the house is going to explode, and you guys are going to be trapped inside, and you're going to die. But there's, there's, a, there's a 1960s uh, sci-fi uh, computer lab in this uh, oh yes. Place. Yeah. By the way, that's that's what he can blow up. Lots of and and lots of like sound effects of like <laughs> stuff like uh fluctuates and whatnot. But so he goes in and he tells them this and he also uh insinuates that he wants to um have sex with April. Um and and kind of grabs her and pulls her out of the room and is like you're going to want me soon enough and you're going to be very willing. And because she's trying to like get him to let Devin go. And she's like, I'll go with you if you let Devin go. And he's like, no, he has to die. And so does Michael, but you, you'll be following me around like a little hungry puppy in a week and like all this stuff. And she kind of just fucking cuts him down. And in a very funny way, she's like, she says, I, I can't remember how she starts it, but basically she says, your destiny is nothing but death. And you and you should go look in the mirror and see the black holes where your eyes should be. <laughs> You're like, holy shit! Which it's funny because I mean, we can see him. That's not how he looks. <laughs> but like, yeah, it, it. She like just completely like you have like you know you. The only it, it is so insulting and so complete. The only thing I could ever compare it to was there was a time when my best friend, his little sister, was being a real bother to us, and he was getting angrier and angrier. And in his peak of fury, yelled at her because he could not say we were too young and too uh, brought up in the niceties of the world to swear at her or call her anything derogatory in a, uh, a, a lewd way or mean way or or disgusting way. He, he basically he said to her, "You have nothing going for you." <laughs> to a four year old, <laughs> brutal. And I was like, I just remember looking at him like. That is the most complete insult you could give to somebody. <laughs> there's, there's, she has no qualities of at all that are good yeah. that will help her in life. You have nothing going for you, and you never will. Um, and it does seem to affect Garth in a certain way, but like, it, it, uh, I, I guess he, he's he's no longer he no longer wants to have sex with her. Yeah, he kind of throws her back in the cell and just leaves it. So at some point, um, as as Christina and Michael are driving, they realize that there is a big craft um, positioned offshore and it's underwater. And it takes Michael way too long to realize, oh, it's probably a submarine. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's a submarine. This thing, which made me, which made me think that, wow, wouldn't it have been cooler if you gave the because there's really a limit to what you could do with giving the indestructible shell to a gigantic truck. While it is a cool visual for a bit, you originally you realize very quickly it's very hard to take a giant semi truck off road, and it really narrows down the possibilities that the bad guys can do with it. And I thought, wow, you could make an indestructible sub. And then I thought, wow, you could sell that going in that indestructible indestructible sub to so many billionaires <laughs> save <We> can, <laughs> so many lives yeah yeah you Isn't could that, do that. i mean we're a few weeks off that being topical hey let's 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 bring it up to 
to uh, let's make it a little bit more current. How was the new Mission Impossible movie? Well, the Mission Impossible movie I was just going to say does uh, feature a submarine and uh, does uh, talk about AI, which is what Kid is. So very, <laughs> um, very topical. With, with, actually, on your on your scale of weirdness, where does uh, Mission Impossible, the most current one, land? Um, uh, it's a ten. But out of uh, because it's good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that is basically our ranking, anyways. Um, I mean, this is also not topical because this will come out like weeks after that movie came out. But uh, go see it; it's fun. Pop Uh, culture doesn't move 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 that fast, does it? (laughs) Yeah. Um, So uh, they realize there's a submarine. They realize they're going to transport Doctor Bergstrom in the sub. So they realize that their time to get him back is during the transit process. So moving him from the house to the sub. and so they're they're on their way there. They get to the house. They um, they uh, turn off. Michael goes in and basically just hits a switch, and then the circuits turn off, so the house won't blow up. So that was very easy. Um, <laughs> and they he rescues uh, Devin and April. He says, "Hey, go." Uh, protect Christina. I'm going to go after Garth and Goliath and Adrian. Adrian, by the way, is wearing a weird l- red leather jumpsuit. She's like about to do break into Eddie Murphy Raw here. It's weird. Because, and, and we should mention that at this point, uh, Garth is wearing a black jumpsuit with a very flared collar and down to it's, almost his his belly. Yes, it's very funny. His is super tight. Hers is real baggy. <laughs> It is very. It's it's funny that this this is apparently what they need to wear. To where they are they supposed to be going to on the sub themselves to I, sell? You know, I don't know. I don't. Why know if, why do they both change into like fucking like they're gonna go fight the Power Rangers or something? It, I think he has to be in that tight suit to drive Garth like I, or Goliath. I don't think he can. I don't think he can do it in that white leisure suit he's been wearing for half the episode. It it. it it his outfit is so it's not even 80s like at least she's like if you know if eddie Eddie murphy was wearing it at in the 80s then it literally was as cool as you could possibly be yeah because no one on god's green earth the moment ron delirious came out was more popular or cool than eddie murphy was at that exact moment (laughs) yeah uh cannot i cannot express like how culturally relevant he was at one point <laughs> but like he looks like fucking if fat elvis was skinny elvis and was wearing the tightest outfit possible to show off his swinging hips like he looks he's wearing a leisure suit it makes no fucking sense yeah it's 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 pretty wild but so um then we basically get a very long like the second half of the episode is just kit chasing goliath um i mean just in general, this episode is fucking boring, and like <laughs> it has been boring with a few moments of like, what the, what the fuck is that? Yeah, uh, or like that's how you wrap that up. But from this point on, it's so boring. Nothing yeah. really happens. Well, it's the same thing that happens over and over. So like he, so Michael is is chasing them down, trying to get Doctor Bergstrom back. He puts in a call to Devin. Devin has talked to uh, one of their like military friends general maddox who i think is in maybe like part one uh like the first goliath garth episodes that we covered like a uh, last month um and because i think i think that's the same general who's like no one could break into this facility and then they're like yes he could <laughs> um so he says that he'll that they're gonna put out a a army reserve unit to try to help stop uh goliath and that fails um, because because the soldiers just line up in the street and shoot their guns at it, which doesn't work. You would think that at somehow they would. Goliath is in this episode at this point. It's 26 minutes and 51 seconds before we first see Goliath in this episode. Oh, that is true. Um, so, God, like, think about how much of a gap in time there was. Like, yeah, it was about 30 minutes between Goliath sightings during this, like, big, massive movie thing. So – and the episode's fucking called Goliath Returns. Um, and they are fully talking about Goliath like it's, he has a personality at this point. Yeah, and he does Like, it's 100 miles per hour now, and, like, Goliath did this. Goliath's going to do this. Goliath can't be stopped. And, like, Goliath is impo- – like, it's just a fucking truck. Yeah, I think what you said while we were watching made a lot of sense. was, like, if they were trying to sell a toy version – 
of this, like that would make sense. Like if they're they're like really trying to brand it hard, and I don't, I don't think that they did. Like I don't. Th- well, oh, I mean, this wait, is be- maybe be- they this did. Is like one year before, like oh, they did. They did they? Yeah, they did. There is a uh, Knight Rider Goliath truck, um, one eightieth scale. <laughs> I any more than that would be far too large. Um, yeah, I think they did build one. They they certainly did. I, I don't know how original this is. I don't know if this is like it looks. It looks original ish. I I it's hard to tell. Um. Oh, never mind. No, it's not. This was made in 2022. <laughs> so okay, good. Oh, I found a Knight Rider Michael Knight uh, rubber ducky. Um, but like. Your, your your real peak of TV to sell Toyetic products on screen is 84, 85. We're about a year out from that. Yeah. So they, I, I don't think they would have thought of it at that point. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I do see some old toy. They look old, but I don't know how old they are. So maybe they were doing that. Maybe they were trying to like really market that. As a, I know that you, you could buy a kit because I had friends with kit. You could buy a kit kit and build it yourself. I'm not um, fucking doing that. You can <laughs> fucking make your own toys. Gundam, you can go kiss, kiss my ass. <laughs> so uh, so they they kind of do this thing. They, they put out these different roadblocks that Goliath blows right through them, of course. They put out some tanks that fire at him. They don't work. He blows right through those tanks, kills several army soldiers who were apparently piloting these tanks. And um, then... Uh, Michael jumps over them like it's fun. <laughs> yeah, Kit does like a a leap over them. Um, he does two vi- like very similar leaps in a row. Yeah, they they park a big truck full of rocks in in front of Goliath's Pass with heat with which he uh, blows right through. And yeah, Michael he broke through a mountain like fucking. Yeah, Michael yeah. jumps right over that, and then he jumps over the bodies of dead soldiers <laughs> with with no real concern. Um, and he does the, the one like kind of exciting moment in this whole sequence is um and we kind of we kind of talked about this in in um the first part of like uh i can't remember which which part of of the first goliath story but where someone jumps off the side of a truck into a car and um like there's actually you know some some real stunts happening like kind of something similar happens here where kit pulls up to the back of the trailer that goliath is pulling and michael uh, climbs out of the car onto the back, opens up the truck, rescues Dr. Bergstrom, and then you see these two guys climbing out while this thing is moving and they're, you know, jumping back into the car. Like it's a it's a cool stunt. It's like real people doing stuff, um, which is is exciting because it's like, oh, that does look legitimately dangerous if you were to slip and, you know, that could that could be pretty, pretty deadly. Um, but that's really the only kind of exciting thing because it's just kind of the same thing over and over again so now michael has rescued dr bergstrom they drive uh very fast uh garth pursues them and they head right for uh, a cliff and michael uses kit's grappling hook to grab onto some rocks and stop their car from going over the cliff but goliath Garth just drives Goliath off the cliff. Like, feels like he could have stopped. He he says like he doesn't know how to like Gar- Garth because the truck doesn't have personality. Would this would be great where the if the truck had a personality that it went you know it went rampant and they, like they couldn't stop it. And they yes, their death. that would make but, sense. Like, Adrian, at this point for like the last like. 10 minutes it's just been like no stop no stop and he's like you tried to fuck my double and he's my double not oh, i not his that's, double like, oh uh, that's great i'm glad that you reminded me of that that thing she's like why have the why have the copy when you could have the original and he's like he's the copy <laughs> he's not wrong that's no he is right absolutely what i true uh once again if they didn't want that to be true and have the have the bad guy be right simply write his backstory different yeah, we I were. Mean, you're you're not doing it. This is not a based on real events. <laughs> you can make the rob make the truck into a robot. You can make him the double. The double. You we, didn't have to. And if you did, if you read, wrote the first one, you're like, shit. We should have made Michael the original, not 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 Garth. Just 
make up some stupid bullshit and change the story for part two. Well, we we were talking about it while we were watching it. I think it would have been a fun um like twist if you find out that like Michael actually was related to the knights. Like he was like maybe he was given up for adoption or something like that. And and then like Wilton Knight was actually his dad, but they were like separated at birth or something and that And his mom's uh, evil. <laughs> yes. She and is his, she is brought up very late in this episode. Uh yeah. For to no to no end. Yeah, he but basically Garth tells uh Adrian that he that she reminds him of his mother. And it's like that's weird. In bed. Um <laughs> but yeah, like so basically she he, she's like, You have to you have to stop. He's like, I only attack. And even if he had hit Michael He's still going off the cliff. Yes. So because his car is hard and it wouldn't have stopped. Yeah. So he goes off the cliff and um and crashes into the ocean. So he and Adrian go into the ocean. Now they could have made this even better where if if the sub had been parked down there and they just landed on the sub. And blew it up. Yes, that would have been but awesome. Once again, that would not destroy Goliath because he's He's now indestructible. He the one weak spot he had, which is not the tires, uh, though he the the he does disconnect from the back when they're falling. Even yes. though apparently that's not a weak point. Um, even they, the the sub had exploded, he's indestructible. We've been fine. One can only assume that if they don't come back, and I, I don't think either of these characters come back, they simply suffocate to death together in the truck or they can simply open the doors <laughs> and drown or they can you know eat each other i don't know yeah it, yeah it's unclear because they don't come back so it's they almost laugh like we're not bringing him back <laughs> again like they like they laugh like they almost feel like it's like the show saying like that was dumb why did we do it twice oh actually oh no okay weird so and turkle who plays Adrian in Adrian <laughs> Adrian in that episode nine of season two that we talked about previously. And then in this episode, Goliath returns, she does come back in a season three episode, but she, she plays a different one? character. Fucking of course she does. Cause you know, why not? That fits with everything else because of all the doubles and stuff. Yeah. She plays a completely different character. I'm looking to see if it's, um, don't, uh, be careful because the, the the synopsis can be inaccurate. Apparently, yeah, that's true. I mean, the TV archaeologist who wrote the synopsis of these episodes is um, maybe incorrect. Although it does say in the episode that she's the other one that she's in is called Night in Retreat, and Michael disguises himself as a computer scientist named Doctor Nightwood. <laughs> this is this is Marky Wahlberg as a fucking scientist level <laughs> bullshit. I wake up with night wood. <laughs> Working on my night wood. <laughs> but anyway, they crash. And what we've already alluded to, the craziest moment in the episode, is when they cut to the truck sinking in the water, you hear like a dinosaur scream. <laughs> it would, have you ever heard a monster yell in He-Man, Masters Universe? It is the It is that sound. It is that sound. And it makes, it screams. The the truck, which is not alive, which is no personality, screams like a dinosaur when it crashes into the water. It's over. Why did this happen? This is this is literally up there with the fucking turtle flies at the end of that stupid <laughs> Mel. movie. Everybody I do not loves love Mel. Mel. I don't. No, I don't. <sighs> it is it is that. Why does the truck? Make a dinosaur yell when it goes into the water. Unless that's Garth. Yeah, that, that's the only explanation that it is Goliath. And they like cut out the storyline about all that, but they just forgot to turn off that sound effect. If he could have been had a personality, but all he could make was dinosaur monster sounds, even that's cooler than having nothing at all. Yeah, it just like screams or makes like growling noises and you don't really know what's... It uh, is so bizarre. Because like, when, when we talk about like, uh, like, well, yeah, they talk about him like he, like it, it's a thing. I mean, we have Garth saying like, you didn't save me. 
Goliath did. Yeah. And it's like, no, the dude who drove it, who's not a character, saved you. Like, no, no more than the house caught Michael. Yes, he's in the house, but you caught him and put him in a prison in, in a prison there, in a jail cell there. Yeah. The house isn't alive. It didn't catch Michael. The truck isn't alive. It didn't save you. But when the house exploded, it didn't make a noise like a fucking dinosaur <laughs> screaming. But yet the truck did. And we're not making, like, it's not like a subtle thing. It goes into the water and you hear the He-Man monster sound, which, what the fuck? Yeah, it's it's pretty great. I I was like, why? That what a choice! Like that well, is after after four episodes, after including commercials, I put in the show in my brain, which did we did not actually see. Yeah, four hours of Night Rider with Garth and Michael and Devin fucking up and Kit complaining and a truck with no personality ends with the truck going into the water and it screams like a dinosaur. Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting choice, and I don't. It's fucking agree hilarious, it. but I don't think they thought. I don't think they did it to be funny. I don't know why. I I, I just I feel like it, there was two scripts that went into production. Editing left us with a Goliath that would not scream, but the finished product they did shoot and put on and and tested did have it screaming. And that made it into the episode, right? Yeah. Like that's the only thing that makes sense. I there mean, has to be a like they they had to be shooting this with enough footage where there was they it, there was a version that they were working it with and around that they had edited out the last product, but it was you know part of like you know they were shooting a ton of 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 shit for this episode that had Goliath have a personality. It's the only thing that makes sense yeah i i'm i'm a little i'm a little disappointed because i know that there is another episode of knight rider where there is like kind of a a a like alternate like kit like a fake kit or something car right like yeah it's car it's car and it's voiced by peter cullen so like of course you would do that but also this episode would have it do (laughs) because it's michael's evil twin with a truck that has the same shell as Kit. So clearly, if you're going to do four episodes on them, at some point during that time, Goliath would get a personality chip. Except he doesn't. Except, except when it dies. When the truck dies. And trucks can't die. But when the truck dies, it screams. It screams. It's like if you if you stepped on a rock and all of a sudden the rock screamed like a fucking dinosaur and you'd be like... What the fuck happened? Why did the rock, an inanimate object, which I see a thousand of a day, why when I stepped on it did it scream? It must be something wrong with how the universe is working. When this truck goes see, into the water, it's, it's, it's it screams weird. like a dinosaur. It's weird because Car sounds like what we wanted from Goliath. So like they had already done it, basically. Well, if you were, who else would do Peter Cullen is the voice of Kai, right? In, in season one and then season three, it's Paul Freeze. But still, you have Peter Cullen voicing a semi truck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe he didn't want to be typecast. <laughs> he hadn't been yet. And apparently, you know what else? I think he's fine with that because he's been doing it yeah. for 40 fucking years. Yeah, that's true. He's totally fine with those paychecks. Um, but yeah, Everyone like what else has been recast with celebrities? It, apparently, except Peter Cullen. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, so like, Carr was, I guess, the prototype for Kit. Um, and he's, he's lore to data lore. <laughs> yes, and um, they basically like Carr gets woken up and by some some thieves, and he escapes. <laughs> and then, I bet he says it like that like, too. Carr gets woken up. <laughs> um and basically car has kind of a mind of its own and it it's its primary directive is self preservation um so just uh, like donald the trump and it 
it uh, it also car drives off a cliff and seemingly explodes in the ocean, very similar to how this episode ends. <laughs> Does um, it scream? <laughs> I probably because it has a personality. But then apparently it comes back in season three. Um, it wasn't destroyed. It was actually just like kind of damaged and buried on the beach. And it gets reactivated, and it gets, and it wants revenge against Michael and Kit. Um, there are so many people who want revenge against Michael and Kit. Yeah, and, and like, like so, Car they they get into a big final showdown. Car fires a laser and damages Kit. They destroy Car's laser by reflecting the beam back at it, um, and then they turbo boost and collide in midair with each other, and Car is blown to pieces. I I hope we have a really a really melancholy sol- soliloquy from Kit afterwards about his moral dilemma of having killed his own brother. <laughs> I mean, because I, I can absolutely hear that in my head. It's it's very weird because like Carr basically is kind of what we <laughs> wanted from Goliath. Every time you say that, I feel like it's Carr saying just calling him saying something about himself in the third person. <laughs> Carr is what you want from Goliath. <laughs> But like, yeah, I, I suppose that's why they could. They, I still think they shot it like it happened. I, I think you're probably right. I think they probably like might have had those elements in there, and then they realized it was just too much for the episode, so they just cut it out. It's just too much of the episode, or it's too much like car, even though it's truck. <laughs> uh, but like for fuck's sake, I I cannot stress this enough. It screams when it goes like yeah. a dinosaur when it's, it hits the water. It's very dumb. And then the the episode ends with um with Michael uh you know saying that like he's gonna take uh, Christina out on a date and that Kit has basically made all the reservations <laughs> and restaurant recommendations for it and um you know and and he's over this real quick. Both of them considering like she's seen things like she in theory. How can she trust anybody as anybody ever again? Yeah, seriously. She's seen two doubles. Yeah, and she's seems okay with it. Everybody seems just like unaffected by. And their date's gonna go poorly because she will not be around next week. Yeah, yeah, she does not uh, obviously does not stick around, and uh, <laughs> and Michael will forget about her immediately. <laughs> That's, I mean, when you have a ladies' man show like this, like. Where they've removed the the in the season two they've removed the on cast romantic uh, interest yeah there is such a rich vein of like what happened between episodes where he fought for this woman the entire episode and they finally they're going on a date at the end of every episode and the next episode she doesn't exist like. It, as bad as that is between sequels, because every fucking eighties, nineties, and two thousands movie recast the female lead between movies to, because years of, two years have passed, and now that female lead is ancient, but the male lead is now handsomer. Uh-huh. Um, with his two years of added uh, weathering, but like, and you can always like, where did the where where did the female lead go? And they're like, oh, she, we had a fight, <laughs> but like he had to have done this. So many times. So many times. And like the car should be like so fucking dumb with him. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, great. You're going on another di- another dinner date. Make, 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 let me f- tell you what the best restaurants are again. Yeah. Because I'll just, this will work out so well again. I'll just make reservations for your usual place at your usual time at your usual table. <laughs> yeah. Like it, like it, it, it if kid has a soul which it appears to have because it worries so fucking much and has panic attacks yeah like i do um it should fucking like tell like find it in your heart to tell one of these women like you're not he's not gonna call you back after this <laughs> yeah just let them down easy kit let uh, like, <laughs> send kit, send like, my normal um breakup text please how flirty can you get on a, on a date if the car is sentient that you're driving to the date? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't like it. it it's like it's, it's it's is that because like it. I, I is it worse than making out with a taxi driver in front of you? <laughs> yes, because you're you're inside someone basically. Like you're at inside that point. somebody, and like and he can I, record I, I, around you. <laughs> And you know Michael's having him, but also oh, yes. like 
like the tax driver or Uber driver or whatever, whatever your your kink is on the internet videos, uh, in theory, like it sees you make out in the back seat and you're 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 being a little risky frisky. Um, but you'll never see them again. That's the that's the main thing, right? Like, you know, like I, I pay them, we wink, and we're out of their lives, and they're out of our lives forever. I mean, the, the car's not going anywhere. <laughs> no, and and that the car's vi- seen it all. Yeah, and that it's video too late. is He's seen um, everything. And that video is is existing on uh, for Michael forever, forever, forever. And then it's, you can scream like a dinosaur in rage as he leaves <laughs> you away. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's how that's how it ends. Um, Michael does. That's how it ends. Yeah, Michael does drop a uh, a line about. I hope we never see them again. And guess what? We will not. <laughs> because He's reunited with his mother. They are yeah. They are done. They never return because he didn't like playing that character for some reason. Even though it seems like it's the most fun he has on this show. Um, I mean, he clearly is having more. Like for whatever, for whatever our complaints in part two of being boring versus part one was actually pretty good. He is having, he is trying so much harder. It's still awful. Yeah, it is the worst acting. Like he is, he is not an actor. He is a star. He is not an actor, which is fine because fucking this was successful. So yeah. like it worked. Sure, but he, like when he's not playing. David Hasselhoff, too cool for school. He cannot do it. He absolutely, at least at this point, when he's a young man in quotes, he cannot do it. And it, <laughs> but he is trying a lot harder at something he cannot do in this episode, which I appreciate because it's because as funny funny as it was the first time and how bad he was doing, because he's trying harder now. He's also trying harder at something he's very bad at, which is by itself. Going to be 100% of the time, if you try hard at it to act at something you cannot do, it is funny. <laughs> it is going to be funnier. The harder you try, the funnier it's going to get. And it is funnier this episode. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty – I think that's pretty accurate. Um, so uh, that is it. I think we, um, we need to put this on our big list of uh, – our, we need to rate this on our scale of weirdness. Um, we need to take into account last week's uh, or last time's episode um, and this one since they're part of a single story. So be sure to take your uh, that rating into consideration. Um, and so where would you where would you put this on our scale of weirdness? Well, there's a lot to take into effect. The first part was very fun. Mm-hmm. A lot of world building. A yep. lot of th- crazy stuff a lot of things that didn't make sense a lot of Agreed. weird stuff a lot of references of things that would be better fully formed in macgyver and <laughs> gargoyles later um second half a lot of driving a lot of boringness really unsatisfactory how it wrapped up but on a scale of 10 of weirdness it's a 10 because when the truck dies, it screams like a monster. Yeah, I think I can't get. I, I, I mean that instantly. The second that happened, like, well, it's ten. Yeah, it's 10 I think on our you, scale. you're a hundred percent right. Like, you can't, you can't just give a, a at this uh, at this point in time a non sentient truck. <laughs> you can't just have it scream and not expect me to uh, give that a very high rating. If like you had a show where there was a dog for i don't know fucking four episodes four hours of tv time where it's just a fucking dog right the entire time it is just a fucking dog the show has no magical elements i guess adrian's a witch in some particular way she does Mm -hmm. magic the first episode or something sure i don't know we don't see it for four episodes just a dog it's a very standard world with some heightened technology right Mm -hmm. and the very last fucking scene the dog turns the camera winks and gives a thumbs up my man, my man, that is ten out of ten. I don't fucking care what happened before it. That is a ten out of ten. The moment you fucking break every rule. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You are, <laughs> you are a hundred percent right there. Like, there's, there's no way it couldn't be. Um, it couldn't be a ten. Um, at I least. I can't believe we we watched forty fucking episodes and that's how it ended. And I, I'm like, that's all I'll ever remember. Like, I've. Famously, among people uh, people who watch the show or talk to me about the show or even between the two of us, I don't fucking remember anything we do. No. Everything is I, – I, I am needed to it because it's just – I don't have space up there anymore <laughs> uh, for things I even do like. But, like, I will never forget 
in theory, Nevada's truck. Scream. I won't even remember what show we saw. I'll be like, Josh, Christy, were you on that episode? No, you weren't. Okay. Um, <laughs> did the fuck was it? Did we watch something where a truck screamed when it died? And you'd be like, Yeah, it's Night Rider. I'm like, God damn, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> ten out of ten. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think yeah, t- definitely ten out of ten. Um, so uh, I think that's gonna do it for our coverage of Night Rider. I don't know that we will ever watch Knight Rider again. Um, I don't think we need to because we're kind of the best at it now. Yeah, we have we have done a pretty comprehensive breakdown on Knight Rider. So I don't know that we could really crack into anything new on this. Like we I don't know if we could really um you know get any new uh, uh, the shell is really hard I hear anyways. That's true. It's it's a it's a bonded honestly. molecular shell. It would be very hard to crack any more of that open. Um, but before we go, I do want to uh, put out a little quick programming note. So if you are listening to the show, which who are you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are listening to this show uh, and you kind of want to know like, hey, when what are you guys doing next? What's happening? Um, well, we're going to take uh, the month of August off. Uh, we both have some some travel that we're doing, um, and we're going to be a little busy. So we're you know getting these recorded a little early, and we're um, going to have this ready to go. But we're going to take off August. We're going to take a little break. But then when we come back in September, we are already going to be knee deep in the spooky season because, of course, we are. Of course we are. We have learned – there's two things that – have worked for podcasts and for our numbers not so much anymore but you know in the past when we are people actually listen to our show uh spooky season very good oh yeah very very good for numbers you know what's not good volleyball or sharks <laughs> one of the any shows about volleyball or sharks for september or rue mcclanahan for some reason <laughs> rue mcclanahan if, if, if we had a, a if she's in a horror tv show oh a spooky oof. tv show man let, I let wish. us know i wish if there's a, a halloween episode of golden girls <gasps> which we should look up Ooh, uh, that's a great we idea should, we that would be that would be a conversion we get all our listeners back yeah <laughs> so i will say for for spooky season you know obviously that means that hopefully we'll we'll um we don't know exactly what we're going to do yet but we do have some ideas i think that we can probably safely say we'll um We'll revisit uh, Freddy's Nightmares. Um, that's, a, that's a show we haven't gotten back to recently, and that show is a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot to talk about there. We might get um, we might get in a uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark or Goosebumps? It's been a little while since we've touched with we've those. We've never visited The Outer Limits. Uh, we haven't done that. Um, but if you are a listener of this show uh, and you do um, know of a great like sitcom Halloween episode, last year obviously we covered – uh, some home imp- we have covered a home improvement episode. I can't imagine that we'll go back to that um, since I think we've kind of given Tim think- Allen enough uh, attention. But if you yeah. know of another sitcom that has a fun Halloween episode that you uh, think we would get a, a kick out of and we would enjoy, that's um, not Roseanne. That's not Roseanne. Yeah, let's let's also not, yeah not not at the moment. Yeah, not let's anymore. let's give let's give our um our kind of weird um right wing shithead audiences uh, a little bit of a break. <laughs> let's not talk about them. <laughs> um, but if you know of another like fun uh, Halloween episode of a sitcom that you think would be a good a good thing for us to talk about. Uh, you know, feel free to um, to send that over to us. We are still on uh, Twitter, uh, of course, for now anyway. Um, and if there's any other show that you think might be good, any other anthology show, like uh, like you mentioned, Skinner Outer Limits could be good. Maybe a Tales from the Crypt could be fun. Um, yeah, like a, spe- a specific episode that you think would vie well with, with the show. We're not, like you said, we have our favorites we, we want to hit, but like that, we're we're doing a lot of, I mean, the the rest of the year is pretty much the spooky season, um, <laughs> and it, like if you if you suggest something that we are super excited about, it sounds like you know you, you think it's gonna be gangbusters, like it like for sure. Uh, we we don't have enough. We don't we we aren't we aren't bonded to enough. Uh, likely bonded to enough of the to the enough of the slots we have to fill up yet. Yeah, with shows so, exactly. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Give us. A holler, <laughs> yeah, on the social media. Yeah, share share some stuff with us, and we'll um, we'll see if we can we can get it covered. But until uh, September, when we are back, uh, getting things off to a spooky start. Um, I've been Josh. No, I've been Skinner. Spooky Skinner. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, that's common, isn't it, Josh Goblin? <laughs> yes, it is. And um, we we want you to keep it weird out there for our little brief hiatus, and we'll see you uh, in September. 
when things get spooky. been listening to center of weirdness if you like this show rate and review us wherever you find it but especially on apple podcasts you can listen to every episode at centerofweird.com where you can also find all of the old PredictoCast episodes. And if you want to get in touch with us to tell us about a show we should cover, hit us up on Twitter at Weird Center. As always, thanks for listening. 